Uh, and here we are on the Viking homeland, it seems. Yeah, here we have Riverford, the Viking homeland of Valkenheim. It's snowy, it's brute, it's raw. They work with the landscape and they make what they need to meet their needs, and that's about it. So here we have a similar setup to uh, Overwatch, where we can see Zone A looks out over the entire map. Controlling this zone can really give you the upper hand in controlling the battle. Again, for those of you watching at home, to keep track of which color is which, just flip those uh, names. Yeah. And we got a roar from the crowd here after that ring out. Yeah, so there we had a raider use his throw ability to straight away take an enemy out of the capture zone and then go support a friendly and win the duel. This map is very much about using nature. So you'll see a lot of drops, a lot of ledges, and you really need to pay attention to the environment. And that brutal execution was the handiwork of Fairlight Excalibur, uh, working those stuns and working that unblockable combo. Yeah, yeah. yeah it's very much the key to that character. The unblockable combo, while it's not unblockable, it can be dodged, but at the same time, you need to be aware of what's around you and who's around you. Are you able to dodge? Where should you dodge? Is it making it riskier for you dodging close to a ledge? Should you just take the hit and focus on the defense? So we spoke before about feats. So all of the vanguards, while they're tied to a faction and they're unique in their own way, vanguards in general have three main kind of preferences to allow you to level up your renown and unlock your feats. And those are, in a nutshell, getting capture zones, getting to a zone and capturing it for your team, that'll give you renown points. There's also killing soldiers and reviving friendly. So keeping an, a thought or an eye on those three things will help you level up, gain renown, and, and have your feats to make a difference in the battle. And we've got a lot of the teams gathered here on point A, battling it out. Uh, still early in the match, so we're not seeing those level two, level three feats yet. But certainly people making progress towards uh, bringing those extra abilities into the fray. Yeah, and another thing that we really haven't spoken about too much, but we just saw it there, is the, the need to control your stamina. The green bar underneath your health is your stamina. It, it tells you how much gas you have in the tank. If you're constantly dodging, you're going to run out of breath and be a really easy opponent to take out. Not only does stamina affect your mobility, it also means you're unable to put any chains together, which makes you much weaker as an offensive force. Nice kill there by Tangent Gaming. So overall, we haven't really been talking too much about the heroes, but throughout all three matches so far, we've had a good spread, Chris. We've had the Warden, both male and female. We've had the Raider and the Kensei. Um, and I haven't noticed too much of a strategy yet with their loadouts, but we'll see how this game plays out, and maybe it'll affect how they play match four if we make it to that point. But right now, it's looking pretty good. It looks like Team Knight has all three points captured. Again, just switch those colors, folks, and you'll be in tune with the action here. So you can see right now the Raider, the first feat is a passive feat, meaning it's always active. Every soldier he kills gives him a health buff, but it also helps him gain further renown. So he's unlocked a morale booster, the second feat. The third is Berserker, and he's well on the way to the fourth feat. So on the flip side of that, here we have the Knight also working in the lane because killing soldiers is a good way to increase your renown. That pick up and carry move just does not get old. I love it. Yeah, so here we have the opportunity to use high ground to take out the attacker in the capture zone, but I guess it wasn't needed. that medieval chiropractor. <laughs> a Nodashi down the spine will kind of take care of you. You'll be aligned all right. 
So here we have it again. You can see two attackers not on a capture zone and focusing a two on one, but that didn't work to their advantage. Now it's flipped completely into a two and one in their disadvantage. So you really have to work to prioritize your threats. Last but not least, it's objective base. The capture zones are key to winning the round. So we're pretty much back at honors even, so let's see how this plays out with 400 points, give or take, to put the other team into breaking. This is one of those perilous points where you do have the chance to get knocked to a lower ground and then hit from above. You do have the chance to get thrown off the ledge, or you have the chance to just get a good old-fashioned two-on-one. Yeah, sometimes the sword's the best way to go, man. So here's a view of the map from the attacker side. Obviously, they're starting from outside of the sanctuary. They've breached the first gate, but they're still really trying to make it into the courtyard and the main structure of this Viking facility. Oh, he was so close, but just not close enough, Chris. Kensei is going to make a nice saving roll to get back into more solid ground. Got to work that block, though, because that big there Viking axe it. coming down. So now if this Raider point. waits out his time, he can capture the zone and use this zone to regen his health and not die. Stay in the battle and work with his teammates. Oh! Oh! Sent to the bottom. The extra health really made no difference there, Chris. <laughs> So here you can see three attackers, they're very much deciding to work as a group. Whether it works out point-wise, we'll wait and see. Right now they have two of the capture zones, but A is in flux and could quickly change. Looks like we were going to maybe see an execution there, but now we are involved in a fierce battle here, and you see that the uh, Raider attacking has all four feet at the ready. Yeah, and here we see, oh, the Kensai had feet. Didn't need the feet to put him onto the spikes, though. So, I don't want to sound like I'm repeating a lot, but Emil came out and we spoke about working with the community. One thing is now when you die, you do not lose your renown or your feet. So even if you aren't the best player on your team, by the end of the match, you could have full renown and have that level four feet to really make a difference. We really want it to be a balanced playing field. So here we have it. For the first time, the attackers have put the defenders into breaking. Can they hold it off? This attacker actually has a fourth level feat, which is a healing banner, which he can place and heal any of his friendlies within a certain radius. One can easily see how that would change the tide of an engagement. Let's see if we see it in action. Okay, so we've got two duels going on at A. And it's gone from three on two to two on one by the looks of all the crosses on the screen. And it's the blue team. Yeah. Team Samurai trying to rally back. Looks like we've got Cobalt Streak there as the Raider. Ooh. And the orange Team Knight goes down. The defenders rally. Yeah, so the defenders rally there, but they're quickly back in breaking because instead of focusing on the capture zones, while they had the, the hero advantage, they all honed in on one hero, meaning that they didn't take those soft points back and bring them back on their side. Capture zones are all about soft points. Once you have them, you have to retain them. Otherwise, they're always in play. Oh, there we see it. So we have double breaking, but it's a four on two. And all the soft points are still in play because they're only 50 to 20 points above the 1,000 point threshold, Chris. So that certainly sifted the fate for Team Orange, no longer breaking, but nope. the blue team. Team Orange heeded the advice. They saw that there was a capture zone not being contested, A, and they went and took it. Now, essentially, there's no choice. Well played. There's no choice for the defenders to go out of breaking because there's only 300 points, soft points in play, and even if they lose them, they're still above a 1,000 point threshold. And this is the blue team. Team Samurai on the ropes. Looks like Fairlight Excalibur, the last remaining Samurai, trying to make a run here, trying to stay alive. <laughs> oh, there's a we death from above advantage. Above. 
But there you see communication, Chris. They took all four ex escape points and really tried to tie him down. They are running him down. Everyone chasing him with the ladder, but he came oh. back down and knocked one of them to the ground. He's on the point. He's on the ropes. Oh, so there you have it. And there it is. Looks like all those cheers did Team Knight well as they